Um, well, good morning. Good morning. I'm sure it's morning. I have been in uh, five different time zones in two weeks. <laughs> and so um, I am originally from Sierra Leone, uh, a small West African village. And uh, it's one of the countries where it has been acclaimed um, witchcraft is rife. And when I was growing up, I remember there was an old woman who had lost the husband and children. And the community said she was a witch. And so we are encouraged to do all sorts of evil to that lady. And I remember I stole her only chicken that used to give her eggs. <laughs> yes, we stole it as boys and we ate the chicken just to strangle her life. And so years back then, I went, I went to school and I read about the prophets and the poor. And I came back to the village to apologize to the woman. And I said, well, I'm really sorry. I was the one who stole your chicken. And she said, yes, I know. I knew you, you are the ones who did it. But I didn't put a spell on you. And I think that would be very strange for a witch. If you steal a witch, something from a witch, the tendency is that they will put a spell on you. I said, I didn't do that. Rather, I prayed for you. But now I'm happy you've come to pay back for the chicken. <laughs> and I did until, until she passed away. We used, I used to take care of her. And I'm, I'm just saying this to, 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 to underline the fact that I come from a situation where in witchcraft is an order of the day. Because in my context, many strange and unexplainable things happen. And uh, with the mind of the primal African, when these things happen, they must have an explanation for it. And often, they attribute it to supernatural forces. There is no natural cause to any phenomenon. How can you explain the death of a child who was just healthy the other day? Or how can you explain the husband growing to love one wife than the other? Or the harvest filling in one's farm and not the other? Or a widow getting richer than anyone else in the village? Well, how can you explain that? There must be a system of explanation, and oftentimes it goes to supernatural powers. People accused of witchcraft are said to have the potential and disposition to harm people in diverse ways. As a result, which accusation is equal to death sentence? The moment you are accused of being a witch, you are dead. And those who carry out the sentence are mostly gangs, mobs, family, pastors, and witch doctors. In many instances, when a person is called a witch, that person becomes unqualified for any protection whatsoever. They are persecuted, killed, ostracized, tortured with impunity. Most of these heinous crimes are committed in the name of exorcism, or to elicit a confession. While the church has been quick to give a theological response to issues of euthanasia, we have been very quick to give a response to abortion, to alternative sexual orientation, to slavery, to membership in esoteric societies, to female circumcision. We, have, we are yet to give a robust theological response to the issues of witch and witchcraft accusation. So what I want to do in this, in this short paper is to bring my thoughts together, even as I've done some little bit of research, to start putting up that discussion on the table uh, for the African church, that we need to start to engage uh, these issues. I, I teach in a school. I have been into several theological schools, and I've not seen one cause on witchcraft. Of course, there is one. Uh, spiritual powers, we call it. But yeah, Steve, I see you shooting up your hand. Yeah, I know. So I, 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 may, I may want to look at the prevalence. Let's start off by looking at the prevalence of witchcraft accusations in Africa. It is a global phenomenon, but interestingly enough, the way the church in Africa or the people in Africa have responded to it is unbelievable. The, common, the most common response to witchcraft accusation in Africa is either extrajudicial killing, mainly by lynching, or you are made to drink a poison, or mob or jungle justice. They are either forced into exile or they just disappear. It is not that these attacks are episodic. No, they are organized and systematic approaches to eliminate anyone accused of being a witch. And of course, we know that extrajudicial killing in any form is in total and gross violation of the universal, universally recognized human rights. 
as presented in the United Nations Charter and the African Charter of Human and People's Rights. There is no way we can justify extrajudicial killing for any reason. The actual figures of this lynching as the result of witchcraft accusations are hard to come by because mostly these things happen in remote places. And the, few, the figures I'll be sharing with you are mainly what, what, um, what the press has reported and what has been reported to the police, even as our colleagues here have been saying that most of these things go unreported. In the last decades, there are reports that some 300 Kenyans accused of witchcraft were executed by vigilante mobs. Over 50 Ugandans were killed by witch hunters. 70 people in South Africa were lynched to death as suspected witches, and 150 mothers of alleged witchcraft practitioners are, invest are under investigation by the South African police. More than 3,000 cases of witch lynching was reported in Tanzania. In the DRC, at the beginning of the last decade, villages in the Northeast province started a systematic strategy to eradicate all witches from their territory, a killing spree and so to the extent that it took the intervention of the Ugandan army to stop the killing. When the dust had settled down, about 800 people had been hacked to death and scores of villages raised to the ground. It is in this same DRC Congo at the turn of the last decade that hundreds of children were thrown out of their homes because they have been accused of being witches. In Ghana, women accused of witchcraft are killed without remorse and the few who are, who are fortunate to escape flee to a camp uh, of refuge in Gabanga, you may have heard about that name, in northern, in northern Nigeria, I mean in northern uh, Ghana. But it is interesting to know that Gabanga is only one of the six of such camps that exist in Ghana. And according to the statistics, about 2,000 of such accused people now live in those camps. In Nigeria, Children accused of witchcraft are often slashed. I will show you a, uh, a short clip uh, of a live testimony. They are slashed, abandoned, and sometimes washed with acid or just killed. Igwe, a, a, a writer, observed, and I seem to support his conclusion, that there is no evidence outside of human imagination to support that witches are responsible for most of the human calamities they ascribe to them. As my, as my colleagues have actually alluded to, uh, it's, it's a socialization process. I was socialized to hate the witches. What my, what my parents told me, what I was told in the community about them, I was socialized. And so I passed that on, and I believed it. It is interesting to note that most of the people, even as Steve identified here, that receive this accusation are widows, orphans, and oftentimes aliens. I remember when I was uh, in Form 5 reading for the General Certificate of Education, a woman strayed somewhere into town. Uh, by midnight, they discovered her, and what happened? They took her away. I, never, I couldn't tell what they did to her, but she was a stranger. Thus, under the watchful eyes of the church, some 22,000 to, to, to 23,000 Africans were lynched in the last 10 years. 22,000 to 23,000, according to the human rights records. Now, before we go into looking at the reasons why the church is silent, it is good for us to look at the numbers of Christians in these regions. Democratic Republic of Congo, according to the statistics from uh, religiouspopulation.com, Democratic Republic of Congo has 80% Christians. Kenya, 60%. Malawi, the data says 50%. Nigeria, depending upon who is counting, has 45%. Sierra Leone, where I come from, 60%. South Africa, 68%. Tanzania, between 45 and 50%. Well, different websites will give you different, different statistics. But what I'm trying to say here is, most of the countries that have been listed as the worst violators of this human right have high Christian population. So why is it that the church is not talking? Well, many people believe that it is out of illiteracy. I may beg to differ. Because at the moment, I'm dealing with highly educated people who, are, who, who have contributed, who have superintended over witch killings by either omission or by commission. There is a very highly educated professor of philosophy and religion in a very prestigious uh, 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 university in this country 
who still believes that he has not become president of his university because his sister in Sierra Leone is bewitching him. And he actually sent a letter to all of us not to have anything to do with that woman. Well, we also believe that there are forces of good and evil, and the witch represents evil, and so evil must be eradicated at all means. And so when we do this, we are actually doing service to the church. It will interest you to know that Christians in Kenya literally believe this, and hence participated in a mass burning of witches in Kisi some years back, in the name of Exodus 22:18. I don't want to go into any hermeneutical treatment of that text, but the NIV calls it the sorcerer, the person who misleads. But even notwithstanding that, I have the view that these people are making selective application of the text. Deuteronomy 21, 18, 23 says, God commanded us to put to death the rebellious son. Well, how many of us have put to death our rebellious children, if we really want to be true to the Bible? But we don't. But we put to death people who have been accused of witchcraft. I don't want to go into, into what my brothers have said here, that the churches are also proliferating this, this tendency. Uh, Richard Petritis, a researcher on contemporary witch hunt, affirms that a Christian cult in the Democratic Republic of Congo, led by Prophet Onokoko, convinced some families that their children were witches. Consequently, these parents reacted by throwing out hundreds of their children on the street. The Committee of the Rights of the Child noted in the DRC that in the DRC, children are being kept as prisoners in religious buildings where they are exposed to torture and ill treatment, or even killed under the pretext of exorcism. I read the following story in the Associated Press some few months ago. The nine-year-old boy lay on a blood-stained hospital sheet crawling with ants, staring blindly at the wall. His family pastor had accused him of being a witch, and his father then tried to force acid down his throat as an exorcism. It spilled as he struggled, burning away his face and eyes. The emaciated body barely had strength left to whisper the name of the church that had denounced him, Mount Zion Lighthouse. The media has also, Nollywood has also uh, amplified uh, the, the, the issue of, of witchcraft. So what is not happening is what the traditional healer, what the witch doctor used to tell me years back, now my pastor is telling me. And now rather than me go to the witchcraft because I'm a little bit sophisticated, where do I go? I go to the pastor. So the church has become silent, or they are perpetuating it. But there's also the flip side of, the, of, of, of some churches who are completely mute about the issues. Well, in my country, in Sierra Leone, the church that went there, that came along with the free slaves, we are also involved in a lot of secrecy, a lot of witchcraft, the Freemasonry, for example. So, I mean, there are lots of these esoteric societies that accompany the church, and so they couldn't talk about it. And those churches that went to my country that we are not part of this group, just wash it away. It's not important. And so it never actually came into the curriculum for pastoral training. So that a, a good number of our pastors who train out there, they go out and they come face to face with the witchcraft, they have nothing to say about it. What should the church do if it's going to do something at all? I must say that the role of the church is to protect the most vulnerable ones. The people who are, who are using the Exodus text, if they could just go down a little bit, they will see that God is telling them to take care of the orphans, the widows, and the aliens. And like Stephen said, if you turn these people away, God will bring calamity into our houses. But at last, the, these are the people that we are turning around and killing them. The protector has become the killer, either by commission or by omission. Isaiah 117 says, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the cause of the widow. 
Shorter believes that witchcraft beliefs come from two sources, jealousy and scapegoating. And we need to understand this. Jealousy and scapegoating, to scapegoat. Most Africans who believe in witchcraft are convinced, even as my brother just said, that their misfortune is not due to their own incompetence. It's not due to their own laziness or sin, but to an enemy who mostly is a close relation. So, accusation is an easy way to self-indicate and self-justify. Briefly, because I need to show you this, this uh, clip. How should the church respond to this? I think we must be robust in our educational ministries. We must prepare our people in the community to accept responsibility. Things happen to people, they don't want to accept responsibility. It must help them to have a clear perspective about repentance. If I don't take responsibility, I don't repent. Okay, if I don't repent, then I'm taking the salvation story lightly. I should ask for forgiveness. But we've come to the point that when things happen, we give up and we ascribe it to the witchcraft. We must also have the right hermeneutic for suffering, that it is not always evil, that sometimes God accomplishes his ways in, the, in suffering. And so it's not everything that comes to us, we need to look around and say this person is responsible. Underneath, my little experience, underneath every witchcraft accusation, there is a brokenness. We must seek reconciliation and healing in the face of witchcraft accusations. I'm going very briefly. And of course, my second approach, rather than it being a, a, an elaborate teaching a, a ministry of the church, it must be social action. Poverty leads to many accusations. The church should endeavor to help the people into wholesome income generation activities. Politically, most of the countries with gross human rights violation in terms of witch killings are signatories to the human rights charter. The church should have the likes of William Wilberforce to start that campaign against these people and to hold these countries accountable. We should believe that greater is he that is in us. We have a greater power to fight the witchcraft. Yes, I live in constant realization that Christ has given me the victory. Do I get sick? Oh yes. Is it possible for me to lose my job? Definitely. Do I, do, but do I need to ascribe this to witchcraft? Not at all. Because you see everything within the sovereign will of God. I'm going to show you a clip in the next uh, five, five or so minutes. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was driving out to the airport and, yes, I'm taking all those minutes. I was driving out to the airport and then I met this, this, this little guy. He was driving me and said, how many children do you have? He said he has three. And the fourth one is one he rescued. I said, rescued from what? He said, from witchcraft. I said, turn around. I need to go and talk to this young man. Oh, now, where is it now? Is that the computer? Steve, I can't get it working. OK, it's right here. Let's see if I can get this, this little boy. My father died at the age when I was five years old and my mom. So after they died, my uncles now took me to the village there. So I was staying there, no school, no nothing around. One of my aunts now took my sister back to the cabina that she was staying with her. And so she now starts suffering her when her child is dead. She now starts by saying it is my sister that told her. So she now sent for my sister back to the village. When we came back there, the now starts in the years we know about how our parents died that our hands are dead. So the now start my preaching us by they are taking us to different places for medicine. They even take us to a uh, native doctor whereby the native doctor will use a camera by keeping it on the on top of his mattress and he will hit the mattress. If that money fell down then it shows that yes we are there, but if the money not fell down we are innocent. So that man now did it. He did. Nothing happened. The money was still there. So he now reported the issue back to the person that took me there. 
Peppers now see the disappearing. They have to count themselves and they did the same thing. What happened? So we now start like that. It even we reach, we reach a time whereby they have to tie my hand, my legs, including my neck. They use one rope and tie me up. So they were beating me up and down. So because of the pains I go through, I pass through a lot of pains. I have to agree that yes, I'm there while I'm innocent. So we were there, we were suffering together with my sister. We now start thinking of how to kill us. So I have to run to the bush. I met one flat new man. I was staying with him. So I now told him this what is happening and I want my sister to leave the village. So he gave me 2,000 naira and I now came and gave my sister that money. So my sister now get to leave that village. And now she's not going to the village except during Christmas we used to meet there. So after that, they now, that day there was a heavy rain. And they were talking about my sister, now tell them that if my sister is dead, then they are the cause of it because they hate us in the, in the village. So they now, that was what made them to hate me the more. So they now have been trying to kill me. So I've got to make it, there was a day they just called the people of that community for a meeting. I was in the middle, there was a night there at the road. So they were talking about how to kill me. So this, my uncle had made me to now. Now came that day and sat down there with me after they been talking about whatever I was there. And I said that he's bringing me to his place. He wants to put me in school. So that's how I get to know him and we are now living in the same place and he's taking good care of me. So so you're now living with your uncle who rescued you yes. that day? Yes, sir. So if your uncle had not gone that day, what would have happened? They fortunately me that immediately that day because there was a night there and you know, they were planning to kill me. And if you can see, there is a mark here, uh -huh. whereby they use knife. They just uh -huh. hold the hand like this out here. Uh -huh. So they now cut it with the knife. Okay. And so also, there's another one here too. That's exactly what happened here. Uh -huh. It was a knife too that they used. So there was nothing I can do because I'm, I don't have any money to help me just to stay in that village. So that was how I continued with that. Without staying in that village, no school, not in the They now get to put me in school. I did not stay there in time. They now remove me from that school again. But as God will make when I come here, my uncle now put me in, uh, in an orphan school. So they now taught me that it's good to forgive according to the book of Romans 12. So that was the first memory that I learned from the Romans 12, 9 to 21. Which says love one is sincere, it was a slave of this world is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be like a angel. They keep the spiritual favor side in the love. Be joyful with God. Special affection, faithful in prayer. Share with God people who are in this practice of charity. Let the hope as teach you. Bless and love God. Be just with those who need us. Not with those who want. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be calm. Do not be content and get. Be unique to associate with people of no position. Do not depend on what you do for evil, be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. It is possible, as far as I can tell you, you live as being everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but live on for God's work. For it is meant to avenge our persons alone. The country of each enemy is something. So to make me say, to give you something to do. And do this, you keep on coming. So you will not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This was the memory of that helped me to forgive them the more. And even if I went to the village, I always treat them as part of us because the Bible told me so that we should forgive their revengers and it's for God. We are not to take any revenge. So I have to forgive them. And I'm so happy to meet them and even when I put out there with you, he's taking good care of me, which was a very good one. My, my, my encounter with that young man was life transforming. In me, I had this huge Hate, this hatredness for these people who are doing this, this evil to these children. And here he is teaching me forgiveness. I mean, if it were, if it were a class session, I would just stop and say, well, how would the church, on the basis of this boy's testimony, how would the church respond? How would the church respond to witchcraft? On the basis of his testimony, his uncle went and sat there with him and said, if you kill this guy, you are going to kill me. You keep both of us together. And he said, well, take him away. He took him away, brought him into his house, and we have a testimony like this. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.